72 hours ago, he was John Thomas Barnett. Now he's J.T. Barrett, and he is your Ohio State football starting quarterback. Welcome to the special edition of Buckeye Insider alongside Mike Miller. I'm Mark Kuntz. I'm sure you're well aware by now, Braxton Miller done for the 2014 season after tearing his labrum in his shoulder, the same shoulder he had surgery on following the Orange Bowl defeat. And Mike, we're going to hear from Urban Meyer momentarily, but first off, J.T. Barrett is the guy. He edged out Cardell Jones to become the backup, and now... He's the starting quarterback. Mark, I, I'm not nervous at all, as the saying would go with J.T. Barrett. He's got all the necessary credentials. And the fact of the matter is, he's been on campus and a part of that program since January of 2013. So he's been around for a long time. It's not like the Buckeyes have just pulled him off the street. Uh, I, and I think he's t really tailor-made for this offense, or he wouldn't have been Coach Herman and Coach Meyer's first quarterback recruit. Yeah, highly recruited coming out of high school. And as we'll hear from Urban Meyer now, Urban has a comparison that I think will put to rest some Ohio State fans' fears about J.T. Barrett. Day 20 of camp, it went well. Today, pros, uh, I mean, I'm, I get excited about good practices, but I, I think it was, I mean, hard to say that wasn't maybe the best practice we've had since our staff's come to Ohio State. Uh, high energy, for, especially for practice 20. Uh, really impressed. The energy, the speed. I think they see the light at the end of the tunnel, so it was a very, very good day uh, practice-wise. Guys staying up, guys going, getting most of our guys back health-wise. So I'll answer some. Uh, Braxton, is uh, uh, demeanor is doing uh, better than I thought. Uh, he's around the players. and. Um, I think now that he knows the plan's in place and the plan in place is to have surgery. Uh, I don't know the exact time and location and all that, but uh, I'm sure we'll let you know when we find out. Back or right, Clay? Coach, uh, what have the last 24 to 48 hours been like for you and this team? And does this rival maybe the biggest challenge of your coaching career getting JT ready to go? Oh, um, I, I, don't, I haven't really given it much thought other than, you know, it's. We're worried about, you know, one thing that our team's been pretty good at and I've gotten better at is just worry about the moment. And the moment is getting a team ready. Quarterback's an important cog, but that's exactly what it is. It's a cog. It's not the team. And uh, the positive is, and we actually shared this with the team last night, is that injuries happen during the course of football. Matter of fact, I've never met a great player. It's never, you know, just in all sports, just something always happens, and this is a tough one. But they've got, uh, I want to say, I had Tom Herman recite it to our, stat, our team. And I want to say JT and had about 300 competitive snaps, throws, not snaps, this fall. Where when Kenny Guyton went into the game a couple of years ago, I think he had six. You know, so there's, he's had a bunch. And he's a meticulous guy. Uh, JT and, and uh, Cardell's come a long way as well. So we, our two, our uh, backup quarterback and third quarterback have had 300 competitive throws, not reps, throws uh, during training camp. And it's not against scouts. Competitive means against offense, defense. Back row middle, Jared. Urban, you mentioned um, the way that the offense maybe changed a little bit a year ago when Kenny came in when Braxton was out. Offense changed a little bit in terms of the way you called plays, uh, things that maybe he did better. What are some of those things that maybe JT does a little bit better that may alter the way you would attack offensively? Well, that's still to be determined, and if I knew it, I probably wouldn't tell you anyways because we, we're playing the season here pretty soon. But he is a – I was talking to – I forget who I was talking to earlier today, but some of the great – the best quarterbacks are great distributors. You know, I watch Peyton Manning play, and I, I'm in awe the way he distributes the ball around. And I thought Kenny Guyton was one of the best I've been around as far as um, – Getting the ball out rather quickly and distributing to playmakers, let them run with the ball, let them make plays, and uh, that's what my initial uh, evaluation of JT is very good at that. Front row, Bill. You spent a lot of time developing the culture, making sure that culture is in place. How important is it now, in light of the fact that you lost your quarterback? Was that a concern of yours, and uh, that that you know, this is a big test? For Huge test, and. Um, I mean, that's what you prepare for, and, and once again, it's all, it's all too bit determined. However, if you had to start saying, do we need passing grades on day after a passing grade, on two days after a passing grade? Now, three, you know, tomorrow's going to be three days after, then mock scrimmage on Saturday, and obviously the real test is a week from Saturday against a very good team. So, so far they're passing the tests. And in the immediate aftermath, as soon as it happened, what was the move like 
on that deal? Oh, it was devastating. I mean, it was it was a bad deal, you know, because first, first of all, I went, I didn't see exactly what happened, and you know, I thought someone hit him. You know, I was like, you know, I went berserk, saying, like, "What happened?" You know, and uh, so then they looked at me. I said, "No one, no one hit him." It was a seven-yard throw. All right, Austin. Herman, it's been pretty common nationally for people to downgrade your team from a playoff contender to maybe not, you know, the best in the Big Ten on the outside. Has anything changed inside the program in the last 40 hours? Well, I think you know the answer to that. We have practice 21 tomorrow, and and uh, I, I still like our team. I mean, really like her. After today's practice, really, really like our team. Would you consider playing both JT and Cardale? Or? Sure. Yep. Tim. Urban, two quick things. Number one, uh, have y'all in the last 48 hours, 24 hours, second-guessed the bringing, bringing Braxton along the way you did? Do you feel like uh, – how do you feel like that all went? Do you feel like the first surgery was good? Oh, I second guess everything. Yeah. You know, it's third down and six. We don't get it. I second guess. You know, why did we run that third down and six? If they do get it, we're on defense. We second guess that. So when I say second guess, I just ask the questions because I'm not a doctor and and I don't know. But I do. I've been around long enough. Things happen, and uh, uh, it's unfortunate. Kyle Berger had an ACL injury and his ACL tore again. Same one. You know, so I have great trust in our medical staff and. And, uh, but sure, absolutely. Will you second guess? Yeah. It's, I, I wouldn't say second guess, just make sure evaluation that we're doing the best we can. But y'all felt like you were being pretty careful with him, correct? Oh, very careful, yeah. And the other thing, you talked a little about last year about the offense changing a little uh, when Kenny went in. Just do packages change? I mean, what just sort of changes now with JT in there? I mean, well, anytime you, you just, what's his skill level? You know, Braxton's got a very unique skill set. He's got one of the quickest releases that you've ever, you know, that I've ever seen. Kenny didn't have that quick release, but Kenny was a uh, full field distribute, if that makes sense. So we're still going through with JT. JT's got a big, pretty good release. He's got other good skill level. J, uh, the other kid, Cardell, has got a, just a cannon. So, and then you, you add the the element of how do they elongate or uh, you know stretch a play. When things aren't working, both of them have the ability to do that too. So that's all. That's why we go sit in that room and look at each other for 10 hours a day. Is what figure out what pieces that you have. The good thing is the pieces around him are, you know, you know. I don't want to give him too much credit, but I, I, I'm hoping this is you, you throw some short balls and they turn into long gains. We haven't had much of that around here. Front row left, Ari. Coach, uh, in the statement last night, Braxton said that he anticipates coming back in 2015 to lead this team. A, how can somebody be so sure at this point if a year from now that they could do that? And could you realistically see a future building around him again in 2015? I hope. Uh, once again, I don't. How can someone? I mean, that's the normal progress. Uh, progress, I guess. Drew Brees and uh, the great one from Bradford. Oklahoma, Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford had the similar type. I get heard Drew Brees was even worse. And I just sat in the meetings with other doctors. Other quarterbacks have gone through it. And then uh, Sam Bradford, I think, once or twice had the issue. And they all came back and strong, and, and it took a full year to recover. So that's the thing. From the standpoint of potentially moving on, not necessarily being able to play. Moving on the NFL? Or doing, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if it, you know, you just have to get healthy and go. And it's a nine, it's, I'm hearing it's a nine to 12 month injury. So, I, you know, once again, we haven't had this discussion at all. I just read the same thing you said, or I saw that, so I'm good and moved on. Doug. I'm not sure I'm answering your question. I'm not sure what the question was. And it just seems like. How do you do it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Doug, Urban, what, just to cover a little ground again, when this when this happened in February, it was called a a minor outpatient procedure on Braxton. Just that we're here now, that we're from that from minor outpatient to he can't play at all in 2014. Just what? What do I think of that? I mean, is that, are know. you, did, did you have it in your head at all when this happened in February? No, I was kind of, I believed that he'd be ready to go in the summer is what I was, you know, I was kind of in, in my heart believing that he'd be ready to go in summer and, and everything seemed to be on course. You know, we're not allowed to watch our kids throw, but my reports were, because every day I'd ask, how do you do today? How do you do today? And he was throwing the ball really well in uh, July. And then uh, 
when this happens. So no, to answer your question, did I have any thought that this could happen? No. Was there any, you know, even as you got into preseason and were easing him back, were there moments when, when you thought? No, not that. I thought that we might have to, you know, be very careful as we start this season and because of the volume of throws. But no, of course, you never think something like that. Far left, Rusty. Um, Irvin, I would think when you talk to somebody who takes over a job after an injury like this, sometimes the kids are overwhelmed, sometimes they're gung ho, sometimes they're kind of quiet and resign themselves to it. I just wondered if yeah, you've spoken to JT and how did he handle that? Oh, yeah, and our players have. and. Uh, uh, it, this is that's all on an individual basis. You're right. Some kids are frothing at it. And this kid's a very uh, kind of geitnish. You know, he's a very calm, cool, collect guy. He has very good leadership skills. And that's a term we use around here now, geitnish. Uh, have, have you discussed with Braxton what his role would be? Oh, uh, not yet. Period? Not yet. We did talk about you know because we're all. When injury happens, you know, as I've said this before, and this is our team, we've said it probably 12 times since it happened. What's our job? We, everybody has jobs to do. And you can speculate, worry, talk about this, read this, do that. No, no, that's all very good. In, it's all, I mean, that's what people make a living doing. There's none of that here. We lift him up with prayer and with just lift him up as a friend and a teammate. And then you pick up the rifle and go as hard as you can possibly go. And that's the mentality here. And if there's anything other than that mentality, that's when you have problems. Back row right, Rob. Urban, I maybe just answered this, but you've you had this happen, I assume, varying degrees, other places you've been. Utah, we had our quarterback, uh, Brett Elliott, broke his wrist on the first game, and then a skinny kid came jogging in. can't remember his name. It was Alex Smith or something like that, a little skinny guy. He did pretty good. Uh, at Florida, we lost a really good player, uh, Cornelius Ingram. And in 08, in preseason, like practice three, non-contact was running, and and uh, guys have stepped up. And uh, a lot of times, if it's a special team, they actually get stronger. You get pretty close to these guys. I mean, what that balance of being close to a kid, the emotional side of the coach, and then the cut and drop, cut and dry business side, you've got to move on. You've got to go with Barrett. I mean, is that a, is that a tough thing as a coach? No, that's not tough at all. And once again, it depends on who the individuals are. We're all, you know. There's certain guys that have invested an incredible amount in the program, like Braxton. You can't. There's nothing more that you look back and say, "I wish you would have tried harder. I wish you would have played harder in this game." Um, like all of us, it wasn't always perfect. But the two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, you know, it's and, and uh, I mean, it's a difficult part of sport. It breaks your heart. I mean, like shatters your heart. But you got to move on. It's not hard to try to get the other guy ready because that's what we have to do. Last two questions, Todd, Irvin. Uh, Two questions. You go through August, the, sun, the summer, with a plan in mind offensively, what you're going to do because you got Braxton back. How much does that change things now? It's a good question. It hasn't changed at all. Uh, that's we're only day two into it, and so we're going to practice. We have two days today, real light one this afternoon, and then tomorrow morning um, we're going to meet as a staff. And I'm giving them off till after lunch, so we're going to we'll know more tomorrow. But we're going to that. Uh, we're going to game plan for Navy tomorrow morning. The other, the other question I want to ask real quick, can you give us an update on some of the other position battles, offensive line, cornerback? I think this is the last two days. Yep, uh, Darryl Baldwin is starting right tackle, Pat Elfine right guard, center and left guard still to be determined. However, uh, it's a much better to be determined than it was in the <clears throat> spring because we do have bodies. We have guys that are battling. You know, Jacoby and Chad Lindsey uh, battling for the center spot. Uh, you can also put Pat Elfine at center. We've done that quite a bit. And then left guard, you have uh, uh, Billy Price has done really good, and so has Joel Hill. Chase Ferris has had his best camp, so he's he's the to me he's he's the benefit. I mean, he's the, the he might we might throw him in there too. He's had a really good camp, so we do have some real bodies. Cornerback, 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 uh, Duran Grant, and the other side still Eli, we have, we haven't named the starter there. Eli and Garyon and, and Omrani have had very good camps. And what's the other one? Running back, is, uh, Zeke. Zeke, you know, broke his wrist, so he's back. This he's full time. Pra he's full practice now. Just can't hit him. And so uh, it's uh, the other two kids uh, have had a heck of a camp, and that's Rod and uh, Briante and Curtis. So we have four guys right now. So that didn't help you, but we still haven't named that starter. Last question, far left, Matt. Um, you talked about the improvement in your depth of weapons with 
for accident. I mean, he did so much. He could do so much individually. Are there? You would. I mean, you talked about being a distributor. Are there more opportunities for those guys on the table to do something early in the season? Well, I, I talked to the offensive players about that too. There's 100 yards of offense has to be made up somewhere. That's why Braxton was probably more than that. But I mean, just strictly with his skill level, you had 100 yards of offense that we have to find, whether it be rushing, passing, extending plays. And uh, yeah, I'd be far. I mean, I think I see some excitement that there's 100 more yards out there for someone to have. And uh, there's no, you, you, there was a time in two years ago where Braxton right, Braxton left was our best way of getting a first down. When Jordan Hall got hurt, Carlos was still 240 some pounds and not what we're looking for. And the offensive line was just maturing. You know, Jeff Harmon hadn't become a target yet. Devin was inconsistent. Philly was Philly. And then uh, Evan wasn't what he is now. So there's been some nice growth over the other positions. So I, I'm, I'm anticipating a much different offense. Certainly you saw two years ago a little bit more uh, uh, evenly spaced out than it was last year. Moving forward now on Braxton Miller, the release sent out by the university on Tuesday night. Braxton was quoted as saying he plans to return mm -hmm. in 2015, work on his master's degree. It's going to be an interesting situation. Clearly, he could still yep. go pro at the end of 2014. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to get a medical redshirt. Remember, he was a true freshman in 2011. Yep. You can take your redshirt season anytime you want, so he still has another year of eligibility after this year. Yep. But right now, it looks like Braxton Miller will be back in 2015. I think there's logic to that. Some have questioned that a little bit, Mark. And I see the logic in that it'll have been some time since he actually played in game competition. So there's a rust factor that he has to prove a little bit uh, for, for scouts and for those at the next level. Sure, there's a lot of film on him, but how has he evolved? How has he changed? I think it's logical, frankly, that he would return. Moving back now to JT Barrett, talking to some of the players. You'll be able to see those interviews with Duran Grant and Curtis Grant on our website, WSN.TV, the Buckeye Insider Playlist. One of the things they talked about, one of the things Urban Meyer talked about, was the leadership with JT Barrett. Mm -hmm. Last year as a true freshman, JT Barrett, the only freshman on the 25-man Ohio State Leadership Council, he was a leader last year. You hear a lot about his leadership so far this year. That's a very excellent sign because clearly the quarterback position, sure you want a, a, a tremendous athlete, which Barrett clearly is, and you want a playmaker, which we have to believe he is. We'll see that. He hasn't really had that opportunity. But those sort of leadership qualities that are evident to the players and the coaches behind the scenes, a very positive sign. And I don't think those are smoke and mirrors either. I, I respect those people that say that, and I think those are genuine and makes you feel good. Another telling thing that Urban talked about, we've got to make up 100 yards of offense without Braxton Miller. They have the weapons, they feel they have the weapons this year to do that, whereas in 2011, 2012, they didn't necessarily have those same weapons. Even last year, they were very reliant yeah. on Braxton yeah. Miller and Carlos Hyde. I think with all of these high-skilled players that have come in, this is going to be a year for them to shine, and without Braxton Miller, it'll be able to spread the wealth around yeah. a little bit more. You know, all we can really draw on is largely what happened last year when Braxton Miller was out and Kenny Guyton came in and how statistically those numbers were pretty much equal and did elevate and where those numbers went to. They went to other players. Not certain, of course, that's going to happen this time, but I think that's a logical previous comparative that one can look to. And after the practice on Wednesday, Urban Meyer said he very much liked his team. He's never thought about the playoff. He's only thinking yeah. about Navy right. and that clock winding down to Navy game is getting shorter and shorter. Join Mike and I next Tuesday on TV 44 as well have a full half hour preview of the Buckeye season opener in Baltimore against the Navy midshipmen. For Mike Miller, I'm Mark Hoots. We'll see you next time on Buckeye Insider.